We've been, uh, we have been if I came over to the cemetery to poke around and see what we could do in regard to finding uh, David's grave. Since Mum and I were here, T.I. has developed an enormous bitumen road to go up that way and up this way and up that way and up that way, up the hill. We made our way up the hill and found the home that Mum and I built in 1949. And we, uh, having a look at that, it was hard to recognise because uh, people had extended this and put a thing over the back and something on the sides. But the fundamental shape was there. And uh, that's where Johnny spent the first year or two of his life. And we talked about this and then went down and went further along. And as we drove, we went and walked along. A taxi came back and, and I said to this bloke, uh, stopped him pulled up uh, and I said, where's the cemetery? I think there's a road from here down to the cemetery. He said, yeah, you just go along here a few hundred yards, five hundred yards and down there. I said, how about driving us, you know? So he, he says, not far. And I said, well, what about driving us? I've got to hook me, me. And so he said, all right. So he drove us down. And as we went around and down the hill through the cemetery, uh, I introduced myself and he said, uh, I said, I'm John Orby. Oh, he said, further. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I said, yeah, that's right. And he said, I'm George Yamaguchi. Ah, he's a Japanese taxi driver well known to me earlier, many years and he was still driving taxis. So we went down into the cemetery and George and Johnny and myself hopped out. We searched around among the graves for a oh, good half hour I suppose. Eh? Mm. And, uh, and then I thought, well, not a big go on George. He's got to earn a living. So I said to him, uh, how about coming back at three quarters of an hour, quarter past six? Uh, so he said, okay, and away he went. And John and I searched around looking for plot 1595. And it was heavily overgrown. And some of the, you know, the graves were outlined with stones, but the grass over them was about three feet high and so you had to sort of put it aside and look and search. So we kept on doing this and in different areas and gradually working down towards the, uh, through the cemetery, which is much more extensive than uh, I had realised because since we went in this new road from on top, there's all these Japanese graves up on top of the hill. I never even knew they were there. So, in this sort of situation, uh, I asked George to go away and come back to Port Pass 6, which he did. And Johnny and I kept on searching and Looking and pressure release. Go on. Yeah. And we we just could not get anywhere. And we're gradually working our way down towards the entrance and that. Because there wasn't any logic in the, the no, way no logic, the plots no, were set no, out. The plots are all happily scribbled, scrabbled around. Eight hundred or something here and, and eleven hundred and something next to it and so on. So uh, we kept on looking 
and around right about ten past six, I, I went to a, another area, which was where there were some recent graves, and I walked up past that, looking at the graves, and went about ten or fifteen yards past, and started looking amongst the grass over there, and. Uh, uh, we were both getting a bit dispirited, dispirited about it all now. But uh, I turned around and looked towards the road again, and I saw this cross, uh, which I'd made 44 years ago, and recognised the shape of it and how the, the cross arm and the upright were. Impressive memorial, which is uh, well worth seeing, and that uh, the uh, tourist buses come round here and uh, stop at this area. And in the background, um, just over here, is uh, David's grave. So uh, it is um, something which we can uh, be glad of that his grave is part of the area which is visited by the uh, uh, buses regularly here in their tour of, uh, of the, there's the gra uh, David's grave, there's the cross, which were made 44 years ago, still standing firm and strong, with his name carved on the cross. These are uh, Islanders' graves, uh, this is the Church of England section of the cemetery. And the islanders really care for their departed. And after the person is buried, they have the big tombstone opening. There's David's grave, another shot of the little tree which we left standing there. A little tough tree, which is a, a pretty good one. Well, here we are. This is the cross where David, uh, the cross that marks his grave, of course. And if you look at the the cross, his name is carved into it, David Peter Warby. Still retaining its strength and dignity and solidarity after uh, so long, 44 years. And there's his uh, number, 1595. Every grave has a number, and that's his. And here's the same grave, of course, but we've just lent the uh, plaque against the, the cross. This is the following day when we've uh, brought the cross and uh, brought the plaque, I mean, which was made in Rockhampton. That little tree growing so sturdily. It was round about here that uh, I looked down and uh, saw the cross and recognised it from the back. Um, and, and
when we have a, um, a good day, attending to David's grave, eh? but we still have work to do tomorrow, and we'll be up uh, in the morning <laughs> at the usual time to uh, complete that work. Here we are out of the grave the next day, old knees playing up a bit and uh, it's just about ready now. We uh, have got it in order and arranged the, the stones and replaced the marker, the numbered marker 1595 and uh, tomorrow we're going to come together with uh, Father Charles Helms, the Dean of All Souls to Blessed.